Over the last 50 years, kelp forests around the globe have been degrading. And that is in part due to a lack of protection and in part due to environmental changes. There's a variety of different threats. One of them is increasing temperatures. I think if we were able to show the natural beauty of kelp forests to people, then that would help a lot for us to actually protect them. On this cruise, I am studying kelp and rockweeds. My research here will be part of ongoing efforts around the globe to better understand the role of kelp in carbon sequestration and climate change mitigation. What we would like to do here on board the Ocean Explorer is to look at the different kelp species that we find along the stations along the coast and take samples of them and analyze them for their carbon content. For each species that we find in this location, I would like three, three from three different spots. Yes. And then, you know, a few pieces basically. Technically, kelp, they don't belong to the plants. They are macroalgae, so they are more primitive in a sense. It's a multicellular organism that you find in nearshore areas and they essentially grow through photosynthesis. You find them around about 25% of coastal areas around the globe. Kelp can grow very big and when you dive through them, you can get the experience of being in an underwater forest. And what makes them special is that besides the sheer size of them, they provide a habitat for a lot of different species. So they are uh, very important for uh, fish, for fish nurseries and for biodiversity. They provide a lot of food for a wide variety of different species and they provide uh, protection against erosion. They serve a lot of different ecosystem functions. And because they can take up so much carbon, they actually play a, an important role in the global carbon cycle. 40 to 60 percent of carbon taken up by plants around the globe is being taken up by the ocean. If the carbon that they take up is being stored for a long time in the ocean, it is considered to be removed from the carbon cycle of our system and thereby actually helps to mitigate climate change. But in order for that to actually work, kelp needs to stay in the ocean. And if it gets buried in the deep sediments, that's when we have a fairly good idea that it will stay there for a significant amount of time, for hundreds of years. The problem is that we don't really know how much is being essentially transported to, to deeper areas. That's in fact the reason why we're here. Besides taking the samples of the actual plants, we also use drone footage in order to understand better the extent of the kelp forest that we are looking at. That will help us, of course, to get a better idea of how much kelp there actually is. And then we do take sediment cores off the stations where we look for kelp and look for kelp-specific markers in the DNA that we find in the sediment. So that allows us to not only see if there was a specific kelp species, but also to some degree quantify the amount of different kelp species in the sediment. We do need to study kelp because only then will we be able to implement policies and regulations that allow us to protect kelp. It is vital that we get a better understanding of how the ocean works in all its different shades and colors. It is by far the largest ecosystem on our planet and it is just so crucially important for the health and for our bare existence on this planet.